So next up we have uh, Tabriz Ibrahim. Uh, Tabriz is a professor at Cal Western. His primary uh, scholarship focuses on patent law, uh, law and technology, and entrepreneurship and business law. Um, Professor Ibrahim's research focuses on the intersection of business law uh, and technology with a particular emphasis on AI, cybersecurity, and digital platforms. Uh, he has a BS from UT Austin, an MS from Stanford, uh, and a JD MBA from Northwestern. So with that, uh, Tabriz, uh, do you have the ability to share your screen or do you have a, a slide? Hi, uh, good to see everyone. Uh, this is Tabriz Ibrahim at California Western School of Law. Uh, I don't have any slides. I'm doing something okay. uh, new Excellent. with Zoom. So. Uh, I uh, will try it out this way. It makes it maybe a little bit logistically easier. So uh, Sean and uh, uh, Dean, thank you very much for uh, uh, the invite and glad to be here. Again, I'm Tabrez and I'm at uh, California Western School of Law in San Diego. So my talk, and it's based on a published paper that's titled uh, Artificial Intelligence Inventions and Patent Disclosure. Uh, I think the organizers did a great job of the, the order here because some of the things that were uh, covered relate to some more complex areas that uh, I won't go into, and um, it's a great order uh, in, in terms of the sequence here. So uh, mine's more of a, a theoretical and normative uh, article, and uh, there were uh, some concepts that were covered in the previous talk that, uh, again, I won't go into, but uh, I'm focused on patent disclosure and essentially the uh, impediments that AI imposes on patent disclosure from a lens of theory and policy. Uh, it relates to a couple of principles that are uh, related in a way. One is patenting of AI itself, and the second is uh, the use of AI in the patenting process. And what I argue uh, in this paper is that uh, there's a lack of transparency regarding uh, the use of AI in the inventive process that makes it difficult to uh, show and demonstrate a uh, future use of AI to achieve the same end state. And this creates problems for uh, enablement and um, what it is fundamentally challenging is uh, the replication uh, of uh, the same end state. And this, I argue, causes uh, difficulties with the disclosure theory in patent law. Uh, from the standpoint of, for example, an examiner uh, would have difficulty in explaining and evaluating the inner workings of AI. And also there's an issue with regards to whether or not the use of AI was present in the inventing process, which uh, in patent scholarship is really uh, alluded to um, uh, uh, prophetic uh, patent claims, which are allowed, but this is a bigger problem with the use of AI. So in this paper, I uh, talk about the uh, complexities of AI that require enhancing this disclosure requirement and the particular characteristics of AI. Um, uh, uh, the paper's on my SSRN, and uh, I don't have slides, but there's a taxonomy that I present that is used to argue uh, enhance AI patent disclosure. And this taxonomy uh, uh, subdivides the use of AI into a couple of different forms. I talk about AI tools and AI generated output. That's how I describe it. The AI tools are, or AI based tools, are the use of complex algorithms. AI generated output refers to the result of applying such complex uh, algorithms. Um, and the question is, does this, uh, the, does the black box nature of AI uh, jeopardize what would be the normatively desirable transparency of patent disclosure that we have from a theoretical sense? Um, what these uh, tools are, they've been described a bit uh, so far today, they assist uh, a human inventor uh, without uh, contributing fully to the conception of the invention. And an AI-based tool can also produce AI-generated output that would satisfy patentability if otherwise created by a human. Uh, that may be a little bit more conceptually uh, difficult to understand 
but I'll go through a couple of examples so as to make sense of it and how this is being uh, used. So as one example, uh, there are computational uh, chemistry companies and also in, in the bio, biological and biochemical areas. Uh, one is uh, Schrodinger. There are also many startups that are computationally designing chemicals with AI-based tools to produce AI-generated output that could be claimed in uh, the form of optimal uh, performance properties and structures of compounds without necessarily conducting physical experiments. And that's what I mean uh, about my earlier uh, comment in, in that it would appear as if it was uh, produced by a human, but it has been actually computationally uh, generated. Um, so the problem is that a, a patent examiner will have, uh, while evaluating and assessing patent claims, of the AI generated output would be unable to determine whether an, an inventor had used an AI based tool without there being adequate disclosure, but may grant what would be an early patent grant or a prophetic uh, patent claim. Um, so that's one uh, case uh, study or example. Another one is the use of uh, complex computations to provide customization and optimization that uh, neither would enable a person or having ordinary skill in the art to practice the invention, nor uh, such that the inventor was in full possession of the invention at the time of the patent application. Uh, so those are two specific, specific examples and optimization is used quite frequently uh, in the inventive uh, process. So as a result of this, uh, and as uh, patent law itself has doctrinally moved away from its historical origins, which were based in the physical world, this disclosure problem has come to the forefront. And as a result, I call for there to be uh, disclosure specific incentives that would promote the um, theoretical uh, motiv motivations for the patent system. And uh, these I talk about in uh, the paper in more in depth while discussing the trade-offs between trade secrecy and patents and which um, there are some complementary reasons for it. In short, and I'll go into a little bit more detail uh, shortly, is that the policy calibrations that I talk about with regards to increased disclosure incentives range from uh, prioritizing examination to reduction of maintenance fees, to greater patent terms that enable longer patent protection to a working model requirement as a uh, prerequisite for a complete patent application. So these are a spectrum of uh, solutions. They're basically carrots on a stick to have a greater disclosure of the inventive method, such as the use of AI tools, for the production of AI generated output. And I argue that this would be uh, wholly appropriate and would advance the objectives of the patent system. And in so doing, I'm uh, essentially laying out what should be the contours of enhanced uh, patent disclosure. Um, so I'll go into uh, a little bit more in depth into uh, how I've come up with this taxonomy and this is um, in the use of uh, these statistical inference techniques that we've been calling AI. And in this paper, I have this taxonomy that characterizes and classifies how this inventive output is generated. There's uh, a quadrant, a two by two uh, matrix that I have of four quadrants. One is, the, is a disclosed AI-based tool and another is an undisclosed AI-based tool. So that's how I uh, divide up AI-based tools. And then I have also disclosed AI-generated output and undisclosed AI-generated output. Uh, there's two parts of this quad, uh, quadrants, uh, two parts of the quadrants that I'm concerned about. Uh, one is uh, uh, it, the undisclosed AI-based tool and the other is the undisclosed AI-generated output. And I uh, describe how this affects social policy uh, related considerations based on this taxonomy. More uh, specifically, the 
AI-based tool can be used to um, generate various types of AI output. And this is uh, the, the two aspects that I mentioned are, are the, the two quadrants where this is important. One is the use of AI, of an AI-based tool um, and whether it's disclosed what that tool is and how it works and how it generates the AI-based output. And the other is the um, undisclosed AI generated output. That is whether the use of the tool was uh, described in the patent application. Um, with this uh, particular quadrant, uh, these quadrants, there's a trade-off then between the decision whether to patent or whether to uh, pursue trade secrecy. And this uh, typically has been considered as being economic uh, substitutes, but they can also be complements. That is, inventors can use both forms of protection uh, uh, to, uh, in, in this AI world. And so that's really the, the tension, the, the doctrinal uh, aspect and, and the normative aspect that I'm focused on in this particular paper is which uh, protection to go after. Um, and I discuss really how the patent system is meant to promote more disclosure, even though there's some skeptics of it, and the detection of disclosure for patent examin examination is also critical. That is for examiners to know when AI has been used to generate this output. Um, I want to be a little bit careful of time, and um, what I think I'd want to do is focus really on the disclosure specific incentives. That's really the sort of the payoff of the uh, paper that I have. I have a lot of other theory in this and um, I'll just I'll focus and wrap up on that. Uh, so what I argue for is a heightened AI disclosure and I recognize that there are greater ex ante cost with it. There's going to be more time required for the inventors to uh, disclosed. Uh, there's uh, additional, I mean, legal time associated with disclosure and describing the use of AI in uh, the patent application. But I think society should care about this. Uh, we don't want uh, patents that are uh, never achieved in terms of um, uh, not there not being sufficient disclosure or having unworkable disclosure and making it difficult for patent examiners to understand whether what's claimed has been truly uh, created, tested, or made workable, meaning enough or sufficient reduction of practice. So uh, there will be, though, um, greater inventor cost and efforts for AI inventors, and that would require greater incentives for doing that. Uh, and so what those incentives are, and to go into a bit more depth on it, uh, and, and to uh, incentivize inventors and not necessarily go down the path of uh, trade secrecy and have there be benefits for the teaching function of patents uh, would involve uh, some trade-offs. Uh, so what are, are these trade-offs? Uh, one is that when you have greater uh, disclosure, uh, there is some greater risk for inequitable conduct by the inventor. There's greater attorney time. Uh, there is also a need for having uh, enticing incentives that should be created uh, in our patent system. And so as a result of this, there will also be greater administrative costs for the USPTO and examination and in, in administering uh, these incentive uh, systems as well. So uh, in short, there's a few ones that I've uh, thought about here. Uh, one, uh, again, in these different levels of these incentives is that there could be a survey mechanism provided to enable the AI inventor to identify the AI inventive method. Another um, incentive uh, would be a, a prioritized examination. That is the first one. There's really not much of an incentive. It's just a survey please tell us that you've used AI. The second one would be giving some sort of priority. Uh, third one is reduction in maintenance fees. And we've seen reduction in maintenance fees in other aspects in terms of uh, smaller and, and, and micro uh, entities. And so this would also potentially be a reduction um, and that could be more significant for AI uh, inventors. 
And so there's a spectrum of uh, solutions that are provided, and this would require some sort of uh, amending to uh, identify what would serve as an AI inventive disclosure. So they would take some legislative action and then also procedurally at the USPTO. Um, a final one is separate from these incentives and that is the use of a data deposit requirement uh, such as for training data. And this may be a little bit time consuming and legislatively difficult to do, but we have seen this in other areas such as a data deposit requirement that is akin to uh, that of, um, uh, this data deposit requirement could be akin to that of seeds for plants or providing uh, biological sequence listings such as for DNA. And so this has been achieved and we've seen this previously with the Plant Patent Act. Uh, so similarly, we could re require a data deposit requirement uh, for which there could be an explanation of certain data in the AI context in an analogous way. Uh, so these are some potential forms of incentivizing greater disclosure. Uh, there is still some future work in this, and I, I, in this paper at the end, I've discussed the, a, some sort of empirical uh, study to have um, uh, kind of viewpoints of the patent versus trade secret decision and how inventors are disclosing uh, AI or not. And uh, that could come through a series of interviews. I hope someday to be able to carry this through. Uh, the sort of uh, narrative view from interviews by AI inventors. So in short, um, and I went through this quickly, but I wanted to leave a little bit of time for questions. And uh, uh, this is a sort of more of a theoretical normative paper looking at the debate between enhanced uh, AI disclosure and the trade-offs with it. Uh, and I've provided some specific disclosure, uh, specific uh, incentives that I think should be enacted. And uh, the idea here is to really carry out the disclosure function that we have in society. Um, I'll just pause there and happy to uh, take questions and comments. All right, we have a fairly long question from uh, Josh Sarnoff, actually, and I'm gonna break it up into parts for you. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and, and I'll read it out. You can also see it in the Q&A. Uh, so uh, he, he wanted to know about uh, under Ariad, and maybe we can also put this to the panelists because I think it uh, goes to a little bit about and and what you had mentioned uh, as you dovetailing from Kate's and also uh, uh, Ryan's talk. I think that's very true. So all of these kind of tie in together. But uh, Josh's question kind of links that and says, you know, under Ariad, um, the applicant must recognize and possess possess the full scope of the claimed invention. Can AI do that? Um, and, and, and really recognize what, uh, what is possessed rather than just simply putting out a bunch of claim elements that must be present? Uh, sure, okay, good, good question. And um, I think part of the context on this as well, can, if you had a lot of computer uh, or AI generated inventions, would it really meet uh, enablement? Uh, would it show, for example, possession? We need to show possession of the invention uh, with some sort of words and structures and figures and diagrams. So it needs to make sense. Um, essentially, what I'm arguing here is that it can help achieve this. And I think this is being done by inventors that is showing, but not really showing enough is being done. Uh, it, it, it is hard to understand if there is. Uh, so for example, concretely, whether there's some sort of uh, structure function or property or performance of some sort of chemical, one can uh, utilize AI to achieve that. And one view could be, well, so be it. And if, if there is an inventor or a company that possesses those capabilities, uh, they should have the right to use such a tool, but it does create some uh, imbalances. Those that have these tools would be able to show this and then create uh, sort of blocking effects. Uh, it's a little bit subjective, and that's part of what I'm arguing is that it's difficult for examiners to uh, assess this. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Uh, I, I also have a question about just how uh, I, I really like your incentive structured solutions for AI inventive disclosures. However, what happens if it's really impossible for, to explain what the AI actually does? I mean, you kind of address this in like the seed deposit uh, rubric, um, but I'm, I'm trying to understand 
none of these incentives will work if the actual people who are trying to invent don't understand what the AI is doing. Good point uh, and good question on this. And this is a, a, a part of the, the challenge is also demarcating this and what exactly is it as well as what it is um, doing. Uh, here, I'm just calling for what is it that we can do to just help a bit in terms of uh, disclosing it uh, for those for, for the area that you're talking about it's the sort of very specialized areas of AI where even the AI uh, uh, computer scientists and engineers don't understand what it is uh, but just admitting to the use of AI in the patenting process would be helpful and having some sort of mechanism would be uh, good uh, I think this is just some policy consideration to think about okay excellent and we have one last uh, fun question from the uh, audience uh, which is what about patents incentives for human inventors who need to sleep? So <laughs> I'll let you take that on. Um, okay, 